What up y'all, Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today I want to talk to you how to breathe while working out. Now there's a huge myth in our industry that started probably back in gym class, taught to you by the gym teacher with tight shorts on, just like the same one that taught you to do a thousand crunches. To always exhale on exertion when working out. That is 100% false. And if you study the work of Kapanji, A.T. Still, Little John, Sutherland, all these people back from the early 1900s and up you know, till now, and you look at the biomechanics of our joints and all our bones, as well as the respiratory cycle, all midline bones in the body um, actually flex and extend upon inspiration and expiration. They actually extend on inspiration and flex on expiration or exhalation. All paired bones, like your temporals, your two iliums, your two hip bones, those actually externally rotate and internally rotate on inhalation and exhalation. So internally, externally rotate on inhalation, externally rotate on expiration. So if we look at the mechanics of respiration while working out, I find that most people that have the shoulder problems, impingements, pain between the shoulder blades, cramping while running, um, degeneration, uh, all these different things can be caused from breathing improperly while working out and actually create more problems in your joints from working improperly while working out. Now, of course, there's a lot of different, you know, it goes a lot deeper than this because depending on the intensity, which is the way to be used for that person, the inspiration and expiration can change. And just to preface this whole YouTube, of course, when you're working with an Olympic lift or someone that's lifting greater than 70% of their 1RM, a lot of the times you actually exhale upon their uh, exertion in a sense because anytime the central nervous system feels stressed, you actually have to protect it and you do that by actually holding your breath and exhaling through the sticking point. Just like if I had you or the average person go pick up a pencil off the ground, you just pick it up. But if I said to the average person, I want you to go lift this 100, 100 pound box off the ground, most people grab it and then exhale on the way up through the sticking point. So. Beyond this YouTube, it's a lot more intricate than just following inspiration and expiration, but I'm going to go into that. But at the same time, you really need to focus on the client that's in front of you and what is what are the weights they use and how intense is the exercise for that person based on the weight they're using, which is the intensity. So you have to think about that because you don't always follow the breath and you look at the... Um, it really typically goes for me with most of my clients if it's greater than 70% to 80% of their um, one arm intensity, then you can actually exhale on exertion through the sticking point to protect the central nervous system. But if you're just working, which most people do with the weight that they can do for eight to 10 reps, 12 to 15 reps, they're working with body weight, all these different exercises, Swiss balls, all this stuff. The bottom line is this, every time you inhale in the body, and this was proven back in the day with the respiration and the primary respiratory mechanism of the spine cranium and um, sacrum, that every time you inhale, your SBS does this and it actually rises. Your cranial, uh, I'm sorry, your um, uh, spinal curves actually decrease or strain secondary to dural tension. The sacrum actually posterior rises around the transverse axis and your iliums actually anteriorly rotate. And the exact, and your diaphragms actually descend, all three of them. And the exact opposite happens with inspiration. We could say the same things for your, you know, your ilium bones. They anterior rotate and out flare and externally rotate on inhalation. The coxal molar joints actually externally rotate, descend on inhalation. The femur uh, externally rotates. The tibia externally rotates a little bit after the femur. Um, you get a cuboid and navicular. The cuboid actually externally rotates. The navicular actually internally rotates. It's one of the three bones in the body beside the radius and the fibula that actually internally rotate. But most of your bones actually have a specific biomechanical movement upon movement and inspiration and expiration. So if you look at working out with a low intensity body weight, Swiss balls, you're doing high reps, things like that, and it's not a high intensity for that person way to be used, you need to follow the breath. So any a really easy rule of thumb is anytime the body extends, right? Anytime you go into extension, anytime you adduct the limbs, abduct is away from the midline. Anytime you externally rotate the limbs, upper body or lower body, externally rotate, uh, abduct is away from the midline, you inhale anytime, or we should say full body supination in a sense, anytime the body closes down, anytime you go into adduction towards the midline, in internally rotate, and anytime you do full body pronation, you actually exhale. The body is always trying to accelerate supination and decelerate pronation. So every time you're working out in a low intensity, you should match that. So think about it, a squat. 
you, most people hold their breath through the sticking point. But if you're not using a heavy weight or intensity for that person, then you should actually be working with the breath. So every time you flex, you go down, you exhale. Anytime you extend, you come up, you inhale. Same thing with the bench press. Anytime you come down, you inhale. Anytime you come up, you exhale. Now, it changes when you're doing some type of rowing exercise. Let's say a bent over row or a cable pulley row or something like that. Anytime you pull the weight towards you doing your bent over row, you actually inhale because you're going into an extension. Anytime it comes away, you exhale. Same thing with like a cable row. Let's just, just say you do a bilateral cable row for shits and giggles in the video. Anytime you pull it towards you, you inhale, you're going into extension in abduction, and anytime you come forward, you actually exhale. So it's really simple. Now, it does change based on specific exercise. Like if you're doing a lat pull-down, if you have a pronated grip and you pull down, you exhale, and when you go up, you inhale. Because the last 40 degrees of shoulder flexion is thoracic extension, and if you exhale, the thoracic spine is actually going back to its normal soon, and you can create an impingement. So it does change a little. Same thing if you're doing a supinated grip. When you're pulling down, you inhale, you're going into extension, and when you come up, you're only coming up to here. You're not getting full thrust, um, full arm flexion, so you don't need to inhale, so you exhale. So it's inhale, exhale. So think about that when you're working out, because you'll see that a lot of people with arthritis, joint pain, impingements, things like that, actually might disappear. Now keep in mind, because I know a lot of people are going to email me and love it, and a lot of people are going to say this is a bunch of bull crap. Well, study biomechanics, and at the same time, I agree on this side of it, but I also agree when you're using heavy weight, greater than 70%, 80% intensity, depends on you working with, and the central nervous system actually feels threatened, you do need to hold your breath through the sticking point. So if you're doing a heavy squat and you squat down, you'd set, hold your breath, squat down, and on the way up, you'd exhale through the sticking point, like if I was doing 500 pounds. But if I was doing a body weight squat or a squat with 135 pounds, I'd actually set and actually work with respiration to actually pump my joints and pump the lymphatic system and work with the body. So hopefully you enjoyed this clip. I'm out of here.